because I had gone through a lot of trauma and stigma, I found myself in a very long labor. When I talk of long labor, I mean I went into labor more than two days. Hi everyone, my name is Armatha Soipan and this is my burn in the oven story. <music> of two, a businesswoman and a content creator. Um, I'm, I'm, the, I'm between 30 to 40 years, that's where I, I, I range. And I'll say this is my story. I'm a girl brought up or born and raised in the Islands and raised by a grandmother uh, simply because my mom, I would say, went abroad to look for greener pastures and I grew up through thick and thin with a lot of challenges as to why one of the challenges I call myself a mother of two despite losing one of my child and uh, I want to talk about my pregnancy journey that uh, may encourage someone seated there or may just give voice to someone who feels she or he is voiceless. My first pregnancy started or I became pregnant at a very tender age, finding myself in marriage. And I will say I went into marriage not knowing what love is, but I thought that was love, that was companion, that was affection that I've been, I had been looking for since I had not gotten it since I was born. Don't forget I said I was raised by my grandmother and also raised by my aunties and uncles had been taken to a boarding school at a very tender age. So the, the bond between a mother and a child was not there for me. So by the time I got married, I felt I was in the right arms, that that was not the case. When I was almost clearing school, my mom came back. So when she came back, we used to live with her and uh, she had a hotel because when she came back, she went and got married, but that marriage never lasted. So by the time I cleared school, we started living with her because our grandmother had given us a house and my mom was running a business. So immediately I cleared school. I started working because I wanted to give my mom a better, a better life. I was not comfortable the kind of life we were living. And so I worked, I got her a, a better hotel and she was really doing well. And I remember I would take breakfast going to work and during that time, because my mom's hotel was just at the stage where we would board and alight from our matatus, so that was the time where I got myself involved or I got myself in a romance relationship with my ex-husband. And um, for me and my mom, we had a bond that um, I would not say it was bad, it was good because she would always look up, up, up to me and after me and I'll also do the same. And I did all this because I really wanted to change our lives for the better. But even when she was working, I will say my mom was a very working, uh, very hardworking lady because she would wake up at 3 a.m. and close the hotel almost at 10. So maybe I would go to the hotel just, just to see her because by the time she gets home, she's tired and she's leaving early. So our, our bond was, was now there where we would work together, we'd sit down, I would help her with her business and maybe just chip in what I can to better her life. And so when I went into marriage, I would go, so my problems started when I went into marriage, I remember when the violence came and all that, I, would, I always went back to tell my, my, my mom, but all my mom could say was, my son cannot do this, my son cannot do this. And up to today, I kept on wondering why. Because for me, I thought, now that you came back, now that I got your business, 
now that I'm married, you should always be protective. But my mom was never uh, there to protect me or even to defend me. I found out I was pregnant when I was already hospitalized. And uh, that time I was taken by Good Samaritan because I had just gone through a very tough burn that my husband used an iron, a hot iron box to burn me and I collapsed. And so by the time I got myself into the hospital, the doctor was telling me, why do I want to kill myself and my baby? And I, I didn't even know I was pregnant because that was my first pregnancy. And so I did, I, it's like I had a wake up call because all that time I was going through violence. I never thought of like running away. And because I had tried to, but the arms I was falling into, I was always told that I was the one on the wrong, that's why I was being beaten. So I ended up always going back to the same man and uh, he took advantage of that. And I went al al through a lot of uh, even uh, emotional uh, trauma because I was being called a lot of names. I was being told things that made my self-esteem very low. I hated myself, but immediately I realized I was pregnant I decided to just walk out of that marriage. And when where I went to start my life alone, this man never stopped following me. So he kept on waiting for me on the road every time I could go to work and come back. And I would be beaten very bad despite being pregnant. And I was so naive, I was just like, I never knew that any time you've been hit because you're pregnant, you're supposed to go to the hospital. And so, I found myself just enduring that pain until when I went into labor. And because I had gone through a lot of trauma and stigma, I found myself in a very long labor. When I talk of long labor, I mean, I went into labor more than two days. And uh, I think I made a mistake also. I went to a hospital that did not have all the facilities because I, thought being in labor for a very long time that was the case but today i know if you cannot go for a long time in labor there's always a second option so after a very long period of labor two three days that is when i delivered my baby but i remember when holding my baby i thought i have what it takes or maybe i just thought since i had lost my marriage i knew i had someone to just give me the the grace to move on the strength but that was not the case because immediately i delivered my baby three hours later just holding her on on my hand and she was gone i felt I felt I never wanted to leave. I felt life was very unfair to me. I blamed God. I remember calling God all names. I remember asking him questions and not being given answers. And all the things that I used to go through, the, the stigma, the, the, the frustrations, the emotional trauma and emotional abuse came back. So. I saw that indeed that man was right. I'm hopeless. I'm not worthy. The more reason even God has taken away my daughter. And um, immediately I left the hospital without my baby. My life became, I would say it just, it's just turned you now from bad to worse. And it was very, very, very bad. I tried suicide. I tried just going somewhere far and just forgetting about everything that I've gone through. But at some point I thought, maybe I did a mistake by asking God so many questions and I thought of going back to church. That was like two years down the line. And so where I went to church, I knew I was in safe hands. I knew I had gotten everything that I wanted, but my view of that was not the case because the same, same person I trusted, the same, same person that was to mentor me in Christianity and to know God more, the same, same person 
took advantage of me because he groomed me i will say he groomed you and this is to every person that maybe may just judge people when you think of someone is being raped it is not the case those people that even perform that act they always groom that person so for me i was a member in the church i would always be uh, recognized and given a platform on the church and so it came a time and my pastor offered to get me a job and so i took my cv to him because by that time i didn't have a good job i was just doing casual jobs and uh, don't forget i'm still in the eastland sides of nairobi and so one day he called and told me i've gotten you a job and you need to come so that you meet the person that is going to give you this job so i ran because I was happy, I knew I was going to get a better job, a good pay, so my life would be more comfortable. But when I went, just getting into his house, he was already prepared. And at the back of my mind, I knew this is my pastor, he cannot harm me, I'm getting a job and I'll be back home. So by the time he, I got into his house, he locked my door. He locked his door behind me, and now we started struggling. And by the time, like, my mind would click that something is about to happen i was already defenseless because don't forget i was not prepared we really fought but at the end of the day he got what he wanted he defiled me and after defiling me the only thing he would say is just leave and i asked him how would i leave my clothes are torn he threw a sheet to me and I left. I saw betrayal. Very big betrayal from a minister of God, from a person I had trusted, and from where I thought that I had gotten the comfort that was needed. And I remember going home at the back of my mind. I never thought of pregnancy. I thought of diseases. So when I went to the hospital, my first thing I told the doctor was like, just test me and i remember when that doctor was like why what, what's going on and so because i insisted i just got the test and i went home and relaxed but a month later i became very sick i tried to take some drugs thinking at just a normal pains headache but when i went to the hospital after a long period of feeling very sick that's when i was told i was expectant and I thought maybe by telling the minister of God that I'm carrying his child, things will just be better for me. But that was not the case. So I went back to him and I told him, this is what happened after what you did to me. And all he did was send me a thousand bob, forced me for an abortion, and also told me that that burden is not mine alone. his house I remember trying to commit suicide because I had so much on my mind I was I didn't have a job I had even areas where I was staying I could barely afford a meal and now there's a baby coming on the way and already my baby has been rejected at conception so I hated this baby to an extent I tried not once or twice or even thrice just to terminate the pregnancy or even kill myself because I wondered how I would go on with life. But by the grace of God, God was very, very, very uh, good or God was just with me and I didn't know because during that time, just God made a way. I got a job. I carried my pregnancy and I gave birth to my child who today is a young boy 
at the age of 12 and I thank God for him. I started my clinic very well and I remember I was going for high risk clinic because I went for high risk clinic because the minute I was like two, three months pregnant, that was when I started developing problems, complications. And when I went to, I would say best facilities in Kenya, that was Pumwani Hospital, I was uh, made to understand that I'm supposed to go to high risk clinic because my pressure was always up and down, up and down. And I thank God as much as I wanted to give birth like any other normal woman naturally but because of the challenges and the stress the stigma I was going through also through the pregnancy I ended up going for an operation that also led my son to be in the nursery for over one week but I thank God because even after all that I emerged a winner because I went home with my son and today like I've said my son is 12 years old he's a young boy that every time i look at him i just see the grace of god in him my pregnancy accepted everything the only challenge i had was to swell i had i was swelling all over my body my legs at times i could not be able to walk but it was very smooth there was nothing i could not eat i never i was never affected by anything apart from at some point i was told not to take tea leaves not to take cocoa, not to take coffee. And I asked my doctor, now what do I take? He said, only milk. And I remember it was a challenge because even affording two packets of milk that time was a challenge. But I thank God, I pushed it until nine months and I delivered a very healthy baby, very, very heavy. And Looking at my son, I was even asking the doctor, Nimini Mezao, you've total quilly. And the doctor was like, yes. With all the things I've been going through, sometimes I could even skip one meal just to save for buying his nappies and clothes because he was coming. But I thank God. When I was six months pregnancy, and uh, where I used to work, so my co workers would come and tell me, hey, but for me i never expect i just i was like god wh whoever comes i'm okay with it so i started shopping at six months and i would hide because during my pregnancy we used to stay with my mom and because my mom was sick and i never wanted to pressure her so what i did i hid my pregnancy and my mom uh knew i was pregnant two weeks to the, to go to deliver. And by the time she started telling me, Nipati Uzi, I want to need some shoes for you. She went under the bed and she was shocked. I had a whole, uh, what do you call it? A whole suitcase full of clothes. Cause every time I would come from work, I would pass by Soko, buy those tiny, tiny two clothes. And um, for me, I will say my son does not know what diapers is. I raised my son with nappies and those old bed sheets because that's where my effort could reach me. And that time I remember pampas, they had come. So the only pampas my son enjoyed was the ones that you're always given at the hospital when you're being discharged. So when they got finished, the pampas were very expensive, not like nowadays, but I thank God. I would wake up in the morning at six, clean my nappies very well, and by nine, zimekauka, I on them. Unafunga mtoto na maisha inaendelea. When I first held my baby, was uh, I, I actually saw him. I was still on my theater bed. But I held him two days later when I had to walk from my ward to the uh, nursery where he was. And I remember um, I, would, I would struggle. But every time I looked my, at my son, I, I got the strength. So I remember when I went home the first day and I was waiting for those things that people called, is it postmortem or postnatal? For me, being even an operational woman, I would still struggle to wash my son's clothes. And my mom would always make noise. Why are you waking up early? You still have stitches. But there was just so much connection and bond between me and my son that... I, I, I never wanted anyone to touch my son's clothes. So I would sit on a stool, clean them, and but I thank God because my mom was there. She took care of me. And when my son was about four months, I went back to work. 
and I never had any complication. The only thing I will say, I think because I started working so early, being operated, I developed a back problem that later came and was okay. So for me, holding my son was the happiest day of my life. The second happiest day of my life was that very day he sucked my breast and there was just any time I would look at him I would feel so much strong connection that I don't think anyone will ever take it away. Lately I tried when my fa my son it came at a point where my son requested for his dad because of the current situation you were going through and I thought of looking for his dad just thinking but because it's more than 10 years maybe he will think of just being remorseful and maybe just come and get to know his son or maybe just help where he called but that was not the case because the minute I looked for him what I got was being blacklisted everywhere I could not even find him on any of his contacts any in any email any social media I was blocked everywhere so that's when I got the strength and I decided no matter what, I'm still going to raise my son. After all, I've raised him over 12 years now. And I would not say it's been, it's been easy, it's been a journey. But being also a journey, it has taught me so many things that today, wherever I go or wherever I meet a single lady who has gone through rape, who has gone through betrayal, who has gone through rejection, I can try and speak something into him or her because you'll always overcome no matter what you go through. Today, I am not where I was. Today, I'm a person who can encourage someone seated there and feeling that all is lost, all is lost, lost. And I've come also to know that it's good to forgive. For me, I forgive the father of my child and I told God, as much as he's your minister, the judgment is not mine, neither is it uh, the vengeance. It all belongs to you. Just venge for me because I was so innocent, I never knew what happened. And I talk of rejection and betrayal because when I lost my first baby and walked out of my marriage, I never knew that my marriage was caused by someone I trusted. I was betrayed by my own biological mother. Because every time I was in my marriage, I would be beaten and go to her for rescue but she was never there for me so by the time my son was asking me who was the, who is the father is because we were going through crisis and i was with my mother in my house she was really sick and so she had her sickness had drained me to an extent we could not afford food on the table my son could not go to school and that is what even caused my son to ask for the father because my son saw how frustrated I was. I was. Our landlord was always on my door, knocking at the door. I would owe people money. They would always look for me. It had reached a point I could not even walk out of my door. And so my son asked me, who is the father? And... I felt very bad because after looking for the uh, for the father, the father uh, blocked me. And so when my mom recovered by God's grace and she went back to her house, she went back and I came to find out that they were they've been living with my ex-husband who caused my first child death, who made me hate men, who made me hate marriage who made me go through a lot i lost my self-esteem i lost my dignity i lost my pride as a woman i came to find out that their husband and wife is my mom 
and it was betrayal on the highest level that even today it's just by the it's just by God's grace that I'm able uh, to speak because I came to realize when you think you'll be betrayed by people who are very far you lie to yourself you're always betrayed by people who are very close to you and they're the same people who work hard for your downfall but I thank God today I'm able to speak out I'm able to encourage someone there feeling that all hope is lost Martha God has given me the grace to forgive because everybody who has hurt me I forgive them and I'm still forgiving them because I just want God to bless me and to change my story and it doesn't matter what you're going through and you who you my viewer who is going who is just sitting there and watching me I'm here to tell you that God always has a reason for everything you're going through Yes I lost my baby and I lost my marriage I was defiled and I was forced to abort but I didn't abort my son and I thank God because every time I look at my son today I see a bright future I see a son who is going just to wipe away my tears because he has been there he has walked with me through this journey he knows what the mother feels he knows what the mother faces and I thank God for him and so I'm here just to tell you continue pressing on there's always light at the end of the tunnel that was my burn in the oven stories once again thank you picture clear thank you burn in the oven stories for giving me this opportunity also my viewer you can follow Martha Soipan on her media platform youtube channel Martha Soipan facebook Martha Soipan instagram Martha Soipan and i'll be grateful shalom